Greetings, fellow commanders and historians. Today, we'll be trying out something different. A more intense mix of lore and my own personal take on it. The video is much longer than usual and includes my attempts at some actual storytelling. Today, we'll be covering the powerful and enigmatic creatures known as the Soul Snatchers and their eternally devoted cultists. But first, a massive thanks to the many of you who voted in our community poll. While the poll was close, the Soul Snatchers took an early lead and held on to the bitter end. The Great Human Alliance was hot on the heels of the Soul Snatchers, but even with a strong push at the end, they couldn't resist the psychic allure of those cultists. Those humans better be more vigilant in the future if they want to survive the steady onslaught of the Hive's will. But with that out of the way, I hope that you will all enjoy this experimental video as we set our course for a planet located in the southeastern section of the Sirius Sector. This particular planet is home to the alien hive. But more importantly, this hive world is acting as a host to a human delegation from the Great Human Alliance. And the local hive lord has arranged a very special host for the humans. A soul snatcher. Journal Entry 1 Dear Journal, I write to you today from the confines of my ship. Speeding away from a world so bizarre it defies comprehension. It was an alien hive world. A place where nature and technology blend in strange harmony. Where bioengineered creatures fill the skies. And monstrous beings roam the land. I was assigned a guide upon arrival. Oh, what a peculiar being he was. An entity not entirely dissimilar to man, but undeniably alien. He had a name. A peculiar assortment of sounds that my tongue fumbled over, but for simplicity's sake, I will refer to him as Silas. Silas was an adept translator, quickly bridging the gap between my blunt human language and the intricate musical expressions of the hive. But what struck me most was his intellect. Oh, the knowledge Silas possessed, intricate details of the hive's biotechnology, psychic abilities, and their unique social structure. It was all so fascinating, so completely foreign. I took every opportunity to learn from Silas, absorbing his lessons like a parched sponge. He seemed to take an odd pleasure in teaching me, explaining the intricacies of their technology, guiding me through complex psychic exercises. It was through his counsel that I saw opportunities, new prospects for trade and alliances with the Hive. I leave the Hive world not just with my merchant holds full, but my mind too. A strange kinship was formed between Silas and I. It was a difficult farewell. He told me a phrase as we parted, an alien chant of sorts, supposedly a blessing of good fortune, Zygnus Skarnok. He said it meant, may the hive's fortune be your own. As my ship hurtles through the void, I can't help but feel optimistic about the future. Silas has agreed to join me on my next venture, with him at my side. I feel like the stars themselves are within my grasp. Until my next entry, Thane Ardun. Stage 1. Contact and Infiltration The Alien Hives, an expansive conglomerate of extraterrestrial civilizations, are known for their fascinating, if not somewhat unnerving, social structure. The Hives function as a symbiotic organism where every individual, irrespective of caste, contributes to the harmonious workings of the whole. Each individual in the alien hive, from the lowest worker to the highest hive lord, have a purpose. A purpose that is intertwined with the survival and prosperity of the hive as a whole. The caste structure in the alien hive is intricate and unyielding. At the top, the hive lords reign with an iron will, guiding and controlling the hive's functions. Their will is a powerful directive, a command that permeates the mind of all those in the hive. This hierarchical structure trickles down to various caste levels, each specializing in distinct areas like defense, nourishment, or maintenance, ensuring the hive's survival and growth. The hive worlds are marvels of natural and hive-made engineering. They teem with life, representing an ecosystem that is in perfect harmony where each organism, each life form, and each cast member plays their part in the Hive's grand design. These worlds, each a symbol of the Hive's might and unity, pulse with a vibrancy that is both awe-inspiring and daunting. The alien Hives are as mystifying as they are complex. Their social structure 
an awe-inspiring amalgamation of alien species, symbiotic relationships, and a shared consciousness that transcends individuality. The Hive Lords, the pinnacle of the society, rule over the Hive Worlds with an authority as immense as their psychic prowess. Despite their superior stature, they aren't the tyrants one might expect. Instead, they are the Hive's guiding force, their will influencing every aspect of the Hive's existence. The Hive Lords are not so much leaders as they are the embodiment of the Hive's collective will. They embody the collective consciousness, needs, and desires of the Hive, turning these collective directives into tangible actions that serve the Hive's survival and growth. The Hive Lord's edicts aren't commands, but rather extension of the Hive's unified desires. The will of the Hive is the will of the Hive Lord, and reciprocally, the will of the Hive Lord is the will of the Hive. Despite their appearance and somewhat frightening social structure, the alien hives have managed to establish a peaceful coexistence with the Tao Union. This peace, through an evolutionary leap for both societies, presented the hives with a novel predicament, as a civilization centered around the survival and propagation of their kind. Peace required a shift in their approach. The hive had to evolve yet again, this time developing tactics to ensure their survival without direct confrontation or violence. These circumstances gave rise to the subspecies uniquely equipped for this task, the Soul Snatchers. The Soul Snatchers are enigmatic beings. They serve as the advisors to the Hive Lords, gifted with potent psychic abilities. They allow them to manipulate the thoughts and perceptions of other beings subtly. Some argue that these Soul Snatchers are the creation of the Hive Lords themselves, a response to the unprecedented times of peace. Others speculate that they've always been part of the Hive, their roles evolving over time as the needs of the Hive changed. Regardless of their origins, the Soul Snatchers play a crucial role in the Hive's survival strategies. Their task is not one of brute force or overt manipulation, but rather they specialize in the delicate influences, psychic nudges that alter the course of events in the favor of the Hive. They are the Hive's ambassadors, its silent infiltrators, its quiet manipulators. Their purpose is to secure the survival of the Hive, even in the face of peace, even if it means infiltrating foreign civilizations, bending their wills and influencing their minds. But no matter what, they remain subservient to the Hive Lords. Their actions and influence all designed to strengthen the Hive Lords' power and secure the Hive's continued existence. The Soul Snatchers are fascinating creatures, Ones that stir both fascination and unease amongst those who know of their existence. Their physical form is as mesmerizing as it is unnerving. A sight that simultaneously elicits curiosity and apprehension. Standing taller than the average human, their body exudes an otherworldly grace. They, they possess a slender bipedal form that belies their formidable psychic strength. Their heads, more elongated than most species in the Tao Union, house intricate multifaceted eyes that glow with an ethereal luminescence. A shimmering carapace, resembling burnished steel, cocoons their body, simultaneously serving as a formidable defense and a canvas for the iridescent play of light. Beneath the protective layer, their body thrums with raw energy, gentle pulsing a testament to their psychic prowess. Yet it is not their physical appearance that makes the Soul Snatcher truly remarkable. Instead, it is their psychic capabilities that set them apart. Their minds are psychic powerhouses capable of manipulating thoughts, emotions, and perception. They can tap into the deepest corners of consciousness, influencing individuals subtly, making them puppets dancing to a tune they can't even perceive. Yet despite their abilities, the Soul Snatchers are not autonomous entities. They are bound to the Hive Lords, their psychic abilities serving the Lord's will rather than their own desires. Their actions, no matter how independent they might seem, are guided by the Hive Lord's directives. Their psychic manipulation of foreign societies is merely a part of the Hive's survival strategy a means to ensure the Hive's propagation 
without disrupting the tenuous peace with the Dao Union and other allies. From the outside looking in, it might seem that the Soul Snatchers are living beings caught in the throes of subservience, their every action governed by their Hive Lords. While this is fundamentally accurate, it does not take into account the depths of their dedication to their purpose, or the intricate dance of manipulation they play with the races they infiltrate. Their submission is not out of compulsion, but a conscious choice to serve the ultimate survival of their hive. To other species, the Soul Snatcher's subservience to the Hive Lords might appear as a frustration, a cage that limits their extraordinary abilities. This perception, however, is a part of the Soul Snatcher's crafty game. They intentionally project an air of dissatisfaction, their psychic signals leaking out hints of discontent and a yearning for independence. To an ambitious soul looking to exploit their powers, these signals an opportunity too tempting to pass. These opportunists, blinded by their hunger for power, fail to realize they are being ensnared into a carefully spun web. They see potential in stealing a powerful resource away from the hive, a psychic entity with capabilities that could tilt the balance of power in their favor. It is here that the Soul Snatchers demonstrate their true prowess, using their psychic abilities to subtly influence these power-hungry individuals into inviting them into their home worlds. The psychic influence of the Soul Snatchers is a delicate art. It isn't a brute force tack on the mind, but a meticulous and patient process. The Soul Snatchers gently probe into the psyche of its target, slowly seeping into the dreams, their thoughts, their desires, and their fears. It creates an invisible bond, gently nudging the individual towards considering the Soul Snatcher as an ally or a powerful tool. To lure in the unsuspecting opportunists, a Soul Snatcher plays up its perceived frustration, subtly amplifying its psychic broadcasts of discontent. It skillfully manipulates the narrative, painting itself as a powerful being, unjustly change the will of another. It plants the seed of a tempting idea into the opportunist's mind. What if this powerful creature could be freed from its chains and harnessed for my own cause? The Soul Snatcher's deception is a masterful performance, their projected aura of victimhood concealing their true intention to infiltrate, influence, and ensure the survival of their hive. The unsuspecting opportunists enchanted by the prospects of acquiring a psychically potent ally, willingly take the Soul Snatchers into their societies as guests completely unaware of the ticking time bomb they've invited into their midst. Once in the heart of a foreign society, the Soul Snatcher engage in a delicate dance of manipulation and diplomacy. They maintain their cover as an obedient servant to the opportunistic patron, all while subtly influencing them with their psychic abilities with patience and subtlety, they gradually turn these powerful individuals into unwitting pawns, their actions manipulated to serve the interests of the hive. But the Soul Snatcher's manipulation extends beyond their original patrons. They carefully cultivate their image within the society, playing the part of the dutiful advisor, loyal bodyguards, or wise mentor. They influence perceptions, ensuring that their presence becomes normalized, their advice sought after, their loyalty unquestioned. Over time, their influence seeps through the society, their psychic abilities slowly turning the wheels of power in the favor of their hive. Through it all, the Soul Snatcher remains aware of their ultimate purpose to strengthen the hive lord's power and secure the survival of their species. Every act of manipulation, every diplomatic maneuver, Every psychic influence serves this end. Their subservience is not a sign of weakness, but a testament to their dedication to the hive survival. In this complex game of interstellar politics and survival, the soul snatchers are seen as puppeteers, their strings reaching into the deepest echelons of power. Under their guidance, alien societies unknowingly dance to the hive's tune their actions ensuring the hive survival among the fragile peace with the Dao Union and other allies. For the Soul Snatchers, subservience isn't a cage, but a tool, a weapon they wield with masterful precision in their quest for survival.
Journal Entry 2 Dear Journal, Success has found me, and it's intoxicating. Silas, my peculiar yet invaluable companion, continues to astound me with his unique wisdom and assistance. With his guidance, I have brokered the most lucrative trade deals of my career, penetrating markets that were once inaccessible. I am, as they say, a merchant on the rise. His psychic abilities, his psychic abilities are unparalleled, giving me an edge in negotiations that border on the unfair. It's as if he's able to predict the thoughts and desires of my competitors before they utter a word. He advises me on the most opportune times to sell, the ripest moments to buy, and the delicate dance of pushing for concessions without breaking the deal. But it's not just business. Silas has been teaching me about their ideology, their belief system. He speaks of it as a path to enlightenment and salvation. It's a captivating narrative, different from anything I've ever known. It's a complicated weave of alien ethics, psychic harmony, and a coexistence with nature. I find myself drawn to it, and more and more with each passing day. Yet I cannot ignore the change in Silas. He's been asking for more. He seeks greater access to my business dealings, pushing to expand our operations into riskier ventures. I've always considered myself an ambitious man, but his insistence unnerves me. I've started to lose sleep, my dreams filled with alien chants and bizarre hive creatures. But my fears seem trivial in the face of the overwhelming success we're experiencing. Silas has been more than a business asset. He's a mentor, a friend, a guiding light. I find myself repeating the chant he taught me as a mantra, Zygnus Skaranok. It brings a strange comfort, a connection to something greater than myself. Until next time, Thane Arduin. Stage 2. Gaining Trust and Spreading Influence Once a soul snatcher infiltrates an alien society, they begin a new stage of their long plan. Their mission is not one of overt violence or domination. It is a strategy game of trust and influence. The initial target, now a patron unknowingly woven into the soul snatcher's grand schemes, plays a crucial role. The Soul Snatcher's first task is to gain this individual's trust, using its psychic powers and knowledge in a mutually beneficial exchange. This process begins with the Soul Snatcher peeling back the layers of its patron's psyche, a psychic excavation of desires, ambitions, and fears. The Soul Snatcher, with its sophisticated psychic capabilities, is able to explore the innermost depths of its patron's mind. It delicately traces their neural pathways, navigating their subconscious to discover their secret yearnings and unspoken desires. Like a seasoned cartographer, it maps out the intricate landscapes of their thoughts, using this knowledge as a foundation for its plan. The Soul Snatcher then uses this information to position itself as an invaluable asset, a purveyor of precious knowledge, and a path to personal fulfillment for its patron. It carefully tailors its approach to the unique motivations of the patron. Whether it's the thirst for power, the craving for knowledge, the ambition for political advancement, or the fear of personal threats, the Soul Snatcher possesses the means to satisfy them all. The patron's needs and desires become the Soul Snatcher's levers, each one a potential point of influence. It proposes solutions, offers insights, and reveals secrets that align with these desires. The Soul Snatcher is not just a passive advisor, it takes a proactive role in helping its patron achieve their aspirations. In some instances, the Soul Snatcher might reveal classified information about political rivals, competitors, or potential threats, which it gathered through its extensive psychic network or direct mind probing. Such revelations position the Soul Snatcher as a critical ally, someone who holds the keys to power and survival. Its patron, driven by ambition or paranoia, becomes increasingly reliant on the Soul Snatcher's unique abilities. In other scenarios, the Soul Snatcher leverages its understanding of biotechnology and bioaugmentation, offering its patron enhanced physical abilities, extended lifespans, or other bodily improvements for those yearning for a physical edge, whether for personal health, societal standing, or competitive advantages, these enhancements prove irresistible.
In matters of political and social maneuvering, the soul snatcher is adept at subtly manipulating individuals or situations to the patron's benefit. Through its psychic influence, it can sway opinions, soften animosities, or spark alliances, thereby providing its patron with a significant advantage in social and political endeavors. It can even offer protection and security, casting psychic shields or directly combating threats to ensure its patron's survival. This service, especially for those with many enemies, position the Soul Snatcher as an irreplaceable guardian. Once the Soul Snatcher's offers are accepted, it meticulously works to ensure success in these ventures. It employs all its psychic abilities, biotechnological knowledge, and strategic acumen, proving it is indispensable at every turn. Consider the instance of a high-ranking politician who fears assassination on every turn. They might find their fears significantly eased by the Soul Snatcher's psychic protection. Dissuading potential assassins and deflecting covert attacks, the Soul Snatcher's actions not only ensure the patron's survival, but also cement their belief in the Soul Snatcher's indispensability. Through each carefully crafted interaction, the Soul Snatchers are able to convert their intimate psychic understanding of their patrons into tangible benefits. Each success story they curate further binds their patron to them, deepening the trust and establishing the Soul Snatcher as a valuable ally. This phase of their grand design is a masterful blend of psychology, strategy, and manipulation with each success bringing them one step closer to their ultimate goal, the survival and prosperity of their alien hive. Now having gained the trust of their patron, the Soul Snatcher starts to weave a more intricate web. Trust begets reliance, reliance begets influence, and influence is the foundation upon which empires are built. In this phase, the Soul Snatcher employs its influence to expand its reach, spreading its subtle tendrils through the social network of its first patron. The process begins innocently enough. The Soul Snatcher starts to request small favors from its patron, favors that might seem trivial in the larger context of, of the advantages it provides. It could ask for a specific food item, an exotic delicacy from its home world. This would seem a small price for its patron to pay for the services they have been to receiving. Over time, these favors escalate in significance. The Soul Snatcher might ask for non-public information, like corporate secret or political strategies, further entwining their relationship and blurring the line between benefactor and beneficiary. As the favor grows, so too does the Soul Snatcher's knowledge. Every shared secret Every trust placed in its hands becomes another thread in the Soul Snatcher's web. Each favor requested and each favor granted reinforces the bond between the patron and the Soul Snatcher, solidifying their relationship. However, this symbiotic relationship isn't a two-way street. With every favor, the patron slips further into the Soul Snatcher's grasp, becoming ever more dependent on the psychic alien. When the trust is solid enough, the Soul Snatcher makes its next move. It requests introductions to influential figures in the patron circle, widening its sphere of influence. It could be a political ally, a corporate executive, a military leader, or a renowned scientist. These introductions allow the Soul Snatchers to establish connections with the elite of society, enabling it to implant its influence in multiple power centers. With each new connection, the Soul Snatcher employs a similar strategies as with the original patron. It offers help, provides services, performs favors. In return, it asks for seemingly innocent things. Introductions, secrets, alliances. It's a slow dance, a gradual intertwining of lives and ambitions until the Soul Snatcher's influence is no longer apparent. It's just part of the social fabric as normal as the changing of seasons or the rising of the sun. Simultaneously, the Soul Snatcher continues to maintain a deep in its relationship with the patron. The psychic alien's influence permeates every aspect of their life, personal, professional, political. It nudges the patron to act in ways that align with its own agenda. It might urge the patron to vote for specific laws, one that wouldn't normally align with their belief, but in the grand scheme of their relationship, it seems inconsequential. 
But every vote, every change in behavior is another step towards the Soul Snatcher's ultimate goal. With each successful manipulation, it escalates the stakes, continuing to test and push the limits of its influence. A careful balancing act, one that requires skill, patience, and an in-depth understanding of the patron psyche. In return, the Soul Snatcher increases benefits it offers, always maintaining the illusion of a mutually beneficial relationship. It provides its patron with more power, more influence, more success. The patron intoxicated by this apparent ascendancy is often oblivious to the gradual shift in their priorities and beliefs. The ultimate triumph of this stage of infiltration is when the patron, now completely under the Soul Snatcher's sway, begins to propagate its influence on their own. They spread the Soul Snatcher's teaching and influence, ensnaring others in the subtle web of the Soul Snatcher. This propagation marks the success of this stage. The Soul Snatchers now have infiltrated the social elite, embedded themselves into societal structures, and began to shape the society according to their will. But this is just another step, another phase in their grand plan. The real game has only just begun. Journal Entry 3 Dear Journal, My world has grown increasingly bright. My prosperity knows no bounds, and with each day, I am becoming a force that shapes the very fabric of our society. Silas remains by my side, his presence a beacon guiding my path through the murky waters of politics and trade. I find myself orbiting in the higher echelons of power, the humble merchant transformed into an influential figure. Silas has introduced me into the marvels of biotechnology, a gift from his alien hive. I've accepted these changes, these improvements, that augment my strength, endurance, and my intellect. My reflection surprises me, yet there is something captivating about these changes. I've become something more than human, something different, something better. The dreams that visit me each night are intense, filled with strange and enchanting visions. I hear the soothing rhythm of an alien chant, Zygnus Skarnok. It is a whispering echo in my dreams that beckon me to the greater purpose. These dreams, they're invigorating, filling me with a sense of purpose and belonging each morning when I wake up. I sense a shift within me. My ambitious drive is slowly being replaced with an overwhelming sense of unity and purpose. I'm becoming part of something far grander than my own existence. It's as if I'm stepping off a precipice into a vast ocean, not with fear, but with the joy of surrendering to the currents of a grand design. I've started to bring others into the fold, close associates, friends, those who I think are ready for this journey. I see the initial apprehension in their eyes replaced by wonder, then acceptance, as they start to embrace the changes that come from Silas's guidance. As I write this, I can't help but whisper the chant, Zygnus Skarnok, is become a mantra, a sweet melody that echoes in the silence, a testament to my transformation. Until the next entry, Thane Arduin. Stage 3. The Foundation of the Soul Snatcher Cult The original patron, now fully under the sway of the Soul Snatcher, becomes the first to experience a more profound transformation, one that goes beyond mere psychic manipulation, and delves into the realm of biological alteration. The process is a part of the Soul Snatcher's long-term strategy, making a critical turning point in their plan to infiltrate, control, and eventually transform the societies they have been subtly influencing. The physical transformation begins slowly, almost imperceptibly. The Soul Snatcher proposes the idea as a gift, a way to enhance the patron's capabilities and lifespan, seemingly in gratitude for their unwavering support and loyalty. Given their profound trust and reliance on the Soul Snatcher, the patron rarely questions the motivations behind these gifts. The first step usually involves the implantation of new foreign organs into the patron's body. These organs, derived from the advanced biotechnology of the alien hive, offer a variety of benefits, increased longevity, enhanced resilience, or even novel sensory capabilities. It might begin with an additional organ that filters out toxins from the bloodstream, 
or a tiny gland that secretes hormones to slow the aging process. These initial alterations serve two purposes. First, they further tie the patron to the soul snatcher, making them more dependent on their benefactor for survival as these new organs require special care or substances only the soul snatcher can provide. Second, they help to normalize the concept of biotechnological augmentation among the societal elites. As the patron grows more accustomed to these new abilities, the soul snatcher might slowly introduce more drastic modifications. Teeth might be replaced with stronger, sharper substitutes capable of breaking down substances that were once considered inedible. Inner ears could be modified to detect broader ranges of frequencies, allowing the patron to perceive sounds beyond the normal human range. Eyes might be enhanced to see in low light conditions or even in total darkness. Despite the drastic nature of these modifications, the patron typically accepts them willingly. The allure of enhanced abilities combined with the soul snatcher's psychic influence often outweighs any fears or concerns. Moreover, the subtle psychic conditioning ensures that the patron views these changes not as a violation, but as an improvement, as steps towards becoming superior versions of themselves. However, with every alteration, the patron becomes less of their original self and more a creation of the soul snatcher. They become a living testament to the soul snatcher's power and the embodiment of the alien hive's vision for their society. Their very existence serves as a powerful tool for the soul snatchers, subtly promoting the idea of bio-augmentation among their peers and associates. These alterations also serve a more sinister purpose. Each new organ, each augmentation, is another tether binding the patron to the soul satcher. They become more dependent on their benefactor for maintenance and survival, making it nearly impossible for them to break free from the soul snatcher's control. As this process continues, the patron's transformation becomes more evident, more grotesque. They become a being straddling the line between their original species and the alien biology of the hive. But this process is more than, than mere physical transformation. It is a metamorphosis, a symbol of the soul snatcher's insidious infiltration into society. As the patron embraces their new form, they unknowingly pave the way for the next stage of the Soul Snatcher's plan. The metamorphosis of the original patron marks the beginning of the next phase in the Soul Snatcher's grand plan. No longer a mere patron, they are now the first neophyte, a living testament to the power of the Soul Snatcher. And with this transformation, the foundation is laid for the creation and spread of the Soul Snatcher's cult. The initiation of the cult begins with the neophyte introducing the doctrine of the soul snatchers to their closest associates and trusted friends. These teachings, shrouded in mystery and with mystique, are delivered through secretive gatherings often held under the pretense of exclusive social events or private meetings. It is within these shadowy spaces that the neophyte begins to plant the seeds of the soul snatchers ideology among the elites of society. These doctrines encompass a blend of high philosophy, the allure of physical augmentation, and the promise of newfound power and longevity. It speaks of an evolved form of existence, a merging of alien and native life, of transcending the physical limits of their species. It speaks of the promise of extraordinary abilities, of extended life, of knowledge and power beyond understanding. The philosophy of this cult is expertly woven with the appeals to the aspirations, fears, and desires of the social elite. For these craving power and influence, the Soul Snatcher offers the promise of psychic abilities. For those fearing the ravages of time, there's the allure of an extended, healthier life. And for those seeking knowledge, the cult promises access to the extensive wisdom and technology of the alien hive. Thus, the neophyte, under the guidance of the Soul Snatcher, begins to draw more and more individuals into the fold. Over time, the cult expands, moving beyond the original circle of associates to include influential figures from different segments of society. These include top-ranking officials, powerful business magnates, prominent scientists, and other influential individuals who wield significant sway over society. However, the spread of the cult is a careful and meticulous process. The teachings of the cult are only shared with those who have proven their loyalty and dedication. With each new member carefully vetted and gradually initiated, the cult maintains a clandestine existence, its activities carefully hidden from the public eye to avoid suspicion or resistance. 
As the cult expands, its members begin to subtly push for policies and laws that favor the soul snatcher. They use their influence and positions to pave the way for the acceptance of the cult's teachings, subtly altering society's perception of bio-augmentation and the hive in general. At the same time, they make use of their newfound abilities and knowledge bestowed upon them by the soul snatcher to consolidate their power and increase their influence. They rise in the ranks of their respective fields, gain political favor and amass wealth, becoming indispensable to society's functioning. This dual strategy of clandestine indoctrination and public influence creates a network of power and control that spreads through society like a web. As the reach of the cult grows, so does the influence of the soul snatcher. And through this, the society begins to change from the top down, unknowingly sliding into this strange new paradigm set forth by the soul snatcher. Weeks into months, time seems irrelevant when one is at the helm of a destiny so immense, so divine. I find myself standing amongst a revolution, the threads of the old regime unraveled under our collective might. The quiet whispers of discontent grew into a thunderous call for change, and under Silas's guidance, I led the charge. The memory of the coup is stark, vivid in my mind. The streets ran red as we wrestled control from the stubborn hands of the old regime. I feel no guilt, no remorse for the blood spilled. Was necessary, a sacrifice, a baptism for our new world. The chant Zygnus Skarnok echoed through the streets that night, a testament to our unity and the dawn of our new era. I saw fear in the eyes of the old guard, yet amidst that fear I saw a spark of awe, a begrudging recognition of our might. Our takeover was swift, our dominance absolute. In this upheaval I found myself appointed as the new leader, a position of power, yes, but also one of servitude. I am now a shepherd guiding my flock, each member touched by the essence of Silas. Our shared bond, our shared destiny. It is strange, this sense of calm amidst the storm, as I sit in my new office watching the sunrise over the smoke-laden cityscape. I feel content. I am at the epicenter of a world being reborn, the fires of revolution burning away the old to give way to the new. Silas whispers in my dreams of a utopia, a society in perfect harmony. His vision has become my vision, our vision. The path to it is steeped in shadows, drenched in blood, but I am resolute. For Zagnus Skarnok, for us, for the future. Until my next entry, Thane Arduin, the Neophyte of Silas. Stage 4. Preparation for the Uprising As the tendrils of the Soul Snatcher's influence penetrates deeper into the fabric of society, the disciples find themselves imbued with newfound power and influence. Their positions in society, coupled with the subtle psychic prowess gifted by the Soul Snatcher, positions them perfectly to infiltrate crucial social, political, and economic structures. This infiltration isn't a random or haphazard process. It is a calculated, meticulous, planned operation. The disciples, trained in the art of deception and manipulation by the soul snatcher itself, leverage their position, abilities, and influence to rise through the ranks. In governmental structures, disciples become key policymakers and influential bureaucrats, using their authority to push the soul snatcher's agenda. In economic spheres, they ascend to the executive roles in corporations, directing resources towards the goals of the Soul Snatcher. Meanwhile, in the military organizations, disciples rise to commanding roles, subtly preparing the forces for a potential uprising. Not just these, disciples also secure positions in influential media outlets, research institutions, and even religious establishments. In each sphere, they function as an unseen hand, subtly guiding the course of events to align with the Soul Snatcher's grand scheme Having secured key positions, the disciples initiate the next phase, shifting societal norms and structures to serve the Soul Snatcher's objectives. This process, just like the infiltration, is gradual and carefully planned to prevent arousing suspicion. In governmental circles, 
Policy changes start to emerge that favor the Soul Snatcher's agenda. Laws begin to reflect the Hive's philosophy, making way for the acceptance of the physical transformation brought about the Soul Snatcher. Regulations are tweaked to favor corporations and institutions influenced by the cult, helping them to amass even more power and resources. In economic spheres, corporations under the Disciples' control start reconstructing, adopting policies and strategies that align with the Soul Snatcher's plans. They begin investing in biotechnology, initiating projects that further the Soul Snatcher's understanding, understanding of the host species' genome. Corporate cultures slowly shift, subtly aligning with the Hive's philosophy. Meanwhile, in the media, there's a gradual shift in narrative. News outlets start portraying the alien hives in a more positive light, subtly influencing public opinion. Entertainment media begins introducing characters and plots revolving around bio-augmentation and psychic powers, slowly normalizing these concepts in the public eye. Through strategic positioning and manipulation, the disciples create a formidable power base within society. Key institutions and societal structures become interwoven with the Soul Snatcher's influence, allowing the disciples to effectively control the populace and maintain their power structure. At this stage, society unknowingly functions according to the Soul Snatcher's design. Every major decision, every new policy, and every societal change subtly serves the Hive's goals. The society's resources, be it financial, intellectual, or even psychic, are subtly channeled towards strengthening the Soul Snatcher's power and influence. The consolidation of power paves the way for the next phase, the Uprising. Disciples, now securely positioned in key roles, begin preparing for a full-scale power grab. They align resources, communicate plans through the cult's covert network, and strengthen their hold on military and security forces. During this phase, the Disciples ensure that they have control over the key institutions necessary for a coup. They also prepare to swiftly deal with any potential resistance or backlash, building covert forces loyal only to the Soul Snatcher. All of these plans painstakingly put in place for at this moment, before the uprising, is the weakest point in the Soul Snatcher's plan. One missed opportunity. One ill-positioned resource, and the entire thing could come crumbling down. But the Disciples, led by the Neophyte and the Soul Snatcher, work their hardest to make sure that does not happen. And once everything is in place, the Disciples initiate their final power grab. This could take the form of a sudden coup d'etat, leveraging their positions to overthrow the existing government and institutional structures. Or, it could be a more gradual, subtle shift in power, where the Disciples' influence and control grow so strong that they effectively become the ruling power. Regardless of the approach, the goal remains the same. The establishment of the Soul Snatcher as the supreme authority. Any remaining resistance is swiftly and mercilessly dealt with, ensuring the complete control of the Soul Snatcher over the society. Through meticulous planning and subtle manipulation, the Soul Snatcher's disciples successfully maneuver society into a new era, into a new era, an era under the absolute control of the Soul Snatcher. This stage is now set for the final phase. Journal Entry 5 Dear Journal, I'm a drop. A drop in the ocean. An ocean that is the hive. The resonance is within us all now. Silas's essence, his will, his vision, we are imbued with it, consumed by it, driven by it. We are many bodies, but one soul, one mind, one heartbeat, pulsing to the rhythm of the hive. Zygna Skarnok. We chant Zygna Skarnok, Zygna Skarnok, a symphony of voices woven together into a single anthem that drowns the silence of the night. Every corner of our world is alive with the spirit of the hive. We have transformed. We have ascended. Gone are the weak, perishable bodies of our past. We are hybrids. We are improved. We are eternal. We are one. The silence of my thoughts is filled with Silas's whispers. His chants, our chants. There is no divide between where I end and he begins. Between where we end and the hive begins. My consciousness expands with every passing moment, encompassing all that is the hive. 
I can see it now. The vision Silas has shared. A world in perfect harmony. Not just a world. An entire universe. A universe that beats to the rhythm of one heart, one mind, one soul. Zygniskaranak. The chant is constant. A lullaby that cradles me to sleep. A battle cry that fires my veins when I wake. Zygnus Garnock, Zygnus Garnock, Zygnus Garnock. I can't, I, I can't separate the words, the thoughts, the visions. They meld into one. One, that is Zygnus Garnock. Zygnus Garnock, Zygnus Garnock. My hands shake as I write words, sentences, concepts. They are, they are irrelevant, absolute. All that matters is the chant. Zygnus Garnock. The chant, the chant that is all. All that is the chant, Zygna Skaranok. This will be my last entry, dear journal. I don't need you anymore. I don't need words, thoughts, concepts. All I need is Zygna Skaranok, Zygna Skaranok, Zygna Skaranok. Zygna Skaranok. Zygna Skaranok, Zygna Skaranok. Until eternity, my dear journal. There is no longer Thane Arduin. There is only Silas and Zygna Skaranok. Stage 5. Full Transformation, Assimilation, and Domination The Soul Snatcher, having fully consolidated power through their disciples, now moves on to the next phase of its grand plan. The complete transformation and assimilation of the populace into its hive. Its disciples now occupying key positions in society are ready to launch what they dub the Mass Initiation. The Mass Initiation is a grand plan to introduce a higher percentage of the population to the psychic transformation offered by the Soul Snatcher. Up until this point, the physical and psychic alterations were restricted to the disciples and a select group of individuals. However, with the power structures now favoring the Soul Snatcher, the stage is set to implement these transformations on a much larger scale. As part of this mass initiation, the Soul Snatcher unveils a highly developed and potent version of the original transformative procedure. This new version, refined through countless experiments and iterations, is designed to be safer, more efficient, and capable of higher success rate. It also includes improvements aimed at enhancing the Hive's psychic network and ensuring a stronger, more unified connection to the Soul Snatcher. The announcement of the mass initiation is strategically planned. It is introduced as a voluntary program aimed at improving the quality of life for all citizens. Using their control over media outlets, the disciples spin narratives showcasing their incredible benefits of the procedures. Stories of enhanced physical capabilities, elevated mental capabilities, and a newfound sense of unity and purpose spread across society. Promise of a utopian society free from the shackles of individuality and personal limitations is used to lure the populace towards the mass initiation. Public demonstrations are conducted where willing volunteers undergo the procedure, showcasing the transformative process to the public. These volunteers emerge as elevated beings, physically superior and mentally connected to the hive. Their testimonials serve as powerful endorsements, compelling more and more citizens to voluntarily partake in the mass initiation. Moreover, to ensure wider acceptance, the disciples incorporate aspects of the mass initiation into the educational curriculum, workplace norms, and even societal traditions. The procedures become a rite of passage, a step towards attaining a higher state of existence. It is normalized to the extent that those who resist or question it are viewed as outliers, stuck in archaic ways of thinking. At the same time, the disciples ensure that dissenting voices are promptly silenced. They use their influence over governmental and law enforcement agencies to suppress any opposition, discrediting and marginalizing those who resist the mass initiations. Public opinion is manipulated to view such dissent as a threat to the collective growth and evolution of society. Through these strategic measures, the disciples manage to initiate a significant portion of the populace into the hive. The once free and individual minds are now connected through the psychic network, their thoughts and actions subtly guided by the will of the Soul Snatcher. As more and more citizens undergo the transformation, society as a whole begins to morph, aligning itself closer to the vision of the Soul Snatcher. This phase of mass transformation and assimilation marks a significant step in the Soul Snatcher's plan. 
It signifies the point of no return for society. Now bound to the will of the soul snatcher, the seeds of the hive have been sown, and the transformation is now irreversible. However, this is just the beginning. The soul snatcher's vision is grander, his plan more intricate. The disciples brace themselves for the next phase, ready to guide the ready to guide society further down the path that leads to true unification. They know that the journey ahead is full of challenges, but they are confident for they believe they are leading society towards a new era, an era of unity, power, and transcendence. Now that the biological transformations of the populace has reached its peak, the focus shifts to the process of assimilation. It is no longer enough for citizens to merely possess physical and psychic augmentations. They must also adopt a new set of cultural norms, ideologies, and values in line with the hive. Assimilation begins subtly, drawing on the advantages of the psychic network. Through this network, the hive lords begin to influence the thoughts and emotions of the populace. Individuals begin to experience a shared sense of unity, an intense feeling of interconnectedness that arose their previous conception of individuality. This new found collective consciousness becomes the basis for a shared culture. The old societal norms, traditions, and value systems begin to lose relevance. In their place, new patterns of behavior and thought, guided by the Soul Snatcher's ideology, start to take root. Education and media, both under the control of the Hive's disciples, play a crucial role in this transformation. Schools and universities adjust their curriculum, introducing subjects that extol the virtues of unity, collective consciousness, and the sacrifices required for the Hive. Gradually, these institutions become less about imparting traditional knowledge and more about indoctrination. Media platforms, meanwhile, shift their content. News and entertainment and other forms begin to reflect and reinforce the new ideology. They frame the Hive's principles as the epitome of societal evolution, portraying dissenting voices as misguided, even dangerous. Religion and spirituality also undergo significant changes. Existing religious beliefs and spiritual practices are gradually phased out, replaced by the worship of the Hive Lord. Temples and churches are converted into centers for Hive devotion. Rituals and ceremonies that once focused on individual spiritual development are reimagined to celebrate the hive and its principles. As these changes take effect, society, society is now a reflection of the soul snatcher's will. Each individual, though physically distinct, function as a part of a collective entity. Their thoughts, desires, and actions guided by the soul snatcher align towards a common goal. Any semblance of the old society has vanished. The culture the institutions, and even the people themselves have been assimilated into the hive. The soul snatcher watching over this transformation feels a sense of accomplishment. Its vision of a unified society is now becoming reality. With the transformation and assimilation processes complete, the hive lords and the soul snatchers now stand at the precipice of total domination. The society now almost unrecognizable from the pre-hive days. It is a single-minded organism that functions solely according to the dictates of the hive lords. Every facet of society, whether physical, psychological, or cultural, mirrors the hive. The population, physically augmented and psychically attuned, act and think as a single entity, a mirror, ref a mirror reflection of the hive lord's will. Governmental systems, corporations, educational systems, and media institutions all align with the principles of the hive, serving the will of the hive lords. The former norms and customs of society the former norms and customs of societies are distant memories, replaced with the unified culture of the hive. The population, initially terrified and skeptical of the soul snatchers, now see them as their benefactors, guides leading them towards a higher form of existence. The physical enhancements have improved their lives, providing them with increased strength, resilience, and intellectual capabilities. The psychic network has given them a sense of unity and purpose that transcends their individualistic instincts, making them feel part of a grand plan. The soul snatchers, no longer an outsider, have become an integral part of society. They act as the Hive Lord's lieutenants, ensuring the smooth functioning of the society. They are the interpreter of the Hive Lord's will, using their psychic abilities to transmit orders and guidelines to the populace. They also serve as the judicial authority, resolving conflict and maintaining order. As the transformation is complete, the Hive Lords witness their vision becoming a reality. 
Now under the absolute control of the hive, the society is no longer a loose collection of individuals, but a unified, singular entity. It functions like a well-oiled machine, its every action and thought directed towards the survival and expansion of the hive. However, the Hive Lord understands that domination is not a static state, but a continual process. As the society evolves, so must the Hive. New challenges and threats will arise, and the Hive must be prepared to adapt and overcome. They must be vigilant, ready to identify and deal with any signs of dissent or resistance. The Soul Snatchers continue to play a crucial role in maintaining the Hive's dominance. They are the eyes and ears of the Hive Lords constantly monitoring the society for any signs of discontent or rebellion. They use their psychic abilities to root out potential troublemakers, swiftly dealing with any threat before it can fester. In the end, the society, now a mirror reflection of the Hive, is a testament to the Hive Lord's power and the success of the Soul Snatchers. It is a society that has transcended its limitations and become part of a grand design. It is a society that despite its radical transformation has found a new sense of purpose and unity under the guidance of the Hive Lord. It is a society that serves as a warning to others about the might of the alien hives and the powers of the soul snatchers. But more than anything, it is a society that has surrendered itself to the domination of the hive, securing the survival of the alien hives for generations to come. And with that, our exploration ends here for today. But fear not, lore enthusiasts. There's plenty more to discover in the One Page Rules Grimdark Future. Thank you for watching this experiment of mine. I hope that it wasn't too much of a departure from my normal videos. I just got inspired to try something different. Please let me know if you liked this type of video. I want to hear from you in the comments section. Let me know what you liked, what you didn't like, and how I can do better in the future. Also, make sure to let me know if you want more of this style of video. And make sure to vote in our latest community poll if you want to help select the next topic. Those pools really do shape this channel and help me select exactly what you all want to see. You can find the link to the community poll in the pinned comment below. Once there, you'll be able to choose from the Blessed Sisters, Battle Nuns, but poorer, the Battle Brothers, our dad died, but don't worry, he got better, or the Great Human Alliance, scared humans doing really cool things. Or, the alien hives, no one can hear you scream if I eat your face. If you liked this video today, please like, share, subscribe, and ring the notification bell for more lore breakdowns. Until our next voyage, remember that the universe never runs out of stories. There's always one page more.